Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves an alto saxophone here. So this four doublers series that I've created is pretty much what do you do when you're stuck having to play an instrument like this, but you're not that familiar with it. So if you're mainly a tenor player or maybe flute and clarinet is your main axe or berry sax or even soprano for that matter, maybe you play trumpet or some other brass instrument. Now you got to move to this thing. What do you do? First thing you need to do is ask yourself, what are your goals? What are your needs for this instrument? Because that's ultimately going to affect how much money you should spend or how much money you should invest in getting yourself an alto saxophone. Also, I'm going to cover for those of you who are familiar with this instrument, and I'm going to cover some pitfalls that come with playing this instrument. Always try the mouthpiece that it comes with. I know this is in the plastic. I have tried this on the other saxophone that I had, and it actually works out really well. It's actually a pretty good mouthpiece. So that can save you a lot of money in terms of what you're gonna have to spend in order to get going with this instrument. Whenever there's a plastic hook for these neck straps, my advice to you is throw it in the garbage. Every time I've had a plastic hook like that, they've all broken and I've dropped the saxophone. I don't even use them as a backup. I'm gonna keep this one because I'm returning this instrument. Most of these instruments will actually come with a high F sharp key, so you won't really have to worry about that. So student model Yamahas, student model Selmers, those instruments have a very good architecture that supports them. Now, maybe it's just not financially possible for you to spend that much money. So ultimately, I would just say get the best saxophone you can afford. I have a saxophone stand here, but this one, folds and fits inside the bell of the saxophone. Obviously, this video isn't going to be made for somebody that's just starting out on saxophone, but learning how to transpose is the kind of thing that you need to start getting going with in conjunction with reading music as soon as possible. All right, so let's cover that and what you need to be able to do because that's going to get very tricky. <laughs> Here we have a concert C that's written out for alto, tenor sax, and flute. So flute is a non-transposing instrument. I'm going to hit the transpose key, and then we'll see what happens. So as you can see with the alto saxophone that plays in an A, that is a major sixth above the C. Tenor sax, it's a D, which is a major ninth above middle C. And also, let's take a look at the key that we are now in. As you can see, the alto sax, we're in the key of A major with three sharps. Tenor sax, we're in the key of D major with two sharps. So the difference between going from concert to alto is three sharps, and from going from concert to tenor is going to be two sharps. I went basically an eight-month contract on a ship playing tenor and having to read alto music because I wound up having no alto saxophone at all. So it is challenging. There is no easy way around it but to do it. But if we look going from three sharps to two sharps, if we are an alto player reading tenor sax music, if we look at the tenor part, we know that anything that we play needs to be fingered a perfect fourth below what's written and also we need to remove one sharp or what is commonly referred to as adding a flat. So adding a flat removes a sharp. Mostly when you're transposing a concert chart, we really just read it a third down. This is more than acceptable. This is a really, really nice tool to have in your hand basket, ladies and gentlemen. It's really convenient when you're doing this transposition with alto saxophone. But when you read bass clef, everything is on the line that it should be on. You have to be very particular about what key you're in and the accidentals that go along with it. So for those of you who play Barry sax, man, I have played a gig where most of it, in fact, there was only one chart that was actually a Barry sax chart. It was all tuba stuff and like bass. So I'm just reading bass clef for the whole thing. It's not a terrible thing to have to do, but if you let your brain slip, oops. <laughs>
All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about knowing your place. As an alto saxophone player, most of the time you are going to sit right on top. Rarely will there be a soprano player that's playing above you, but usually you get your two altos, tenor and a berry, and a quartet, something like this. But mostly the alto sax is carrying the lead. Even in a big band, alto sax is carrying a lot of the lead. <laughs> So let's talk about how your instrument should blend with the tenor. Now, an open C sharp or any type of open woodwind fingering is generally a really bad note on any kind of woodwind instrument. Absolutely no exception when it comes to the saxophone. So an open C sharp on an alto, that's a concert to E, that puts the tenor on the middle F sharp, which is a fantastic note. F sharp is a great note on saxophone. So however great you think your open C sharp is, go with the tenor player. For the tenor, if he's playing an open C sharp, that's a concert B that puts you on a G sharp, which is a very staple note. It can be a little bit low sometimes, but that open C sharp is generally flat on all saxophones anyway. So you guys are gonna be in tune with each other. This clip that I wanna show you now, ladies and gentlemen, was recorded only using a metronome. I did not have the other saxophone tracks as an intonation reference. So all I did was just tune up and then play this thing with a click. It's meant to highlight what it sounds like when people aren't actively listening for intonation errors and when people are actively listening and not adjusting. So this is what it sounds like. Check this out. So when playing with a trombone player, in my experience, I've noticed that because of the ability to micromanage pitches that trombone players have, I haven't noticed any types of tendencies like playing with other saxophone players or playing with a trumpet player. Now, generally, tenor and trumpet have similar types of out of tune overtone characteristics. So as an alto player, you're playing with a trumpet player pretty much treat them like you're playing with a tenor player. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about some saxophones and what kind of prices are out there, what you should get, what my recommendations are, so on and so forth. So on this first page that I have here, I got this from Musician's Friend, but pretty much all of the Guitar Center oriented stores are all pretty much the same anyway. This is March of 2020 prices, so let's dig in. So you can see on this page, it's around a thousand to two thousand dollar range, which goes from some intermediate saxophones to what is a pro horn. Now I'm a fan of Alora. I've had a lot of success with my Alora soprano saxophone. I'm seriously thinking about picking up one of the um, Chicago series Alora alto saxophones. Now, a lot of people ask about what's the difference between an intermediate horn at, at the same price of a pro horn, and a lot of it has to do with where it's made. Generally, I tend to go with the pro horn. Now, unfortunately, pro doesn't really mean what it used to mean in the same way that platinum credit card doesn't really mean what it used to mean. Platinum used to be like the big thing. It was exclusive. Now everybody just calls something platinum. You can get a $500 credit limit with a 25% interest rate on a platinum credit card nowadays. So it means very little. However, you do want to try and research some information to make sure that you get the best product. Uh, let's move on to the next page. Uh, here we have one from Theo Wani, this Shock T. I'm telling you right now, if his saxophones 
are made with the same type of precision that his mouthpieces are that two grand is looking like a steal we got some jupiters over here um one of the first saxophones that i bought was a jupiter and it worked out really really well for what i needed it for all right let's move on to the next page here we got the heavy hitters from selmer yanagasawa kyle worth i mean this is top dollar type stuff if you're looking to really make a lifelong investment these are the kind of saxophones that you can and probably should have for the rest of your life all right let's move on to the next page here uh this is between the three and five thousand dollar range i know we got this uh vintage model kyle worth that's here but taking a look at this this is around in my opinion probably the p marriott 67r is right around my wheelhouse for a professional saxophone still these are the kind of saxophones that you should have for the rest of your life you know like real commitment investment type stuff between the three thousand dollar and thirty five hundred dollar range all right let's take a look at this page here we see we have a price range of 136 dollars to 550 dollars and ultimately just depending on what you're looking for out of your saxophone should have some type of influence on how much money you want to spend i mean van dorns they're always a really good economical choice and then if you don't like them you're not out that much money a lot of guys play them so it shouldn't be that hard to move these mouthpieces if you don't like them all right let's move on to the next page i am going to come back to jody jazz in a minute though we have this uh, theowani elements mouthpiece here usually these theowani mouthpieces go for a lot of money you even have uh, your typical uh, selmer s80 classical saxophone mouthpiece uh this jody jazz mouthpiece that's on the end here i'm seeing that these are coming with some p marriott saxophones that you can get so i think that's a sweet deal we got your classic myers man these are like the vert these are the metal auto links equivalent for alto saxophone so for around 130 bucks a pretty sweet deal okay here we have uh one from uh gary sugal that one's 700 dollars. these are very exclusive mouthpieces um he can customize these for you go to his web page and check that out I have a super jet from jody jazz here we got your classic yamaha 4c at 46 bucks that seems pretty high honestly you can get these for cheaper than that you can go a long way with a really inexpensive mouthpiece and we have some more from van dorn here around 120 to 130 dollar range i'm probably going to pick up a uh, van dorn a5 pretty soon okay let's move on to the next page here we got some more from Theo Wani. You can see these are some of the pricier ones. We even have the hard rubber version from Yamaha. I'll probably wind up picking one of those up also. And then we have the Yamaha 5C at only $28. So you want to shop around for all of these mouthpieces anyway and see what the best deal is that you can get. All right. You can see here we got this one from Jody Espina from Jody Jazz and it costs $995. And I know a lot of people seriously freak out about a price like that for a mouthpiece but in my opinion i'm going to be honest with you ladies and gentlemen if you're going to make a mouthpiece that costs a thousand dollars this is how you do it and let's take a look at why i think this is a fantastic idea at selling a mouthpiece at this price so for one the name jody espina jody jazz that is a name that is synonymous with a fantastically well-made high quality product right that also the product is unique it's set apart from the other products that he has and here are the big reasons number one limited edition not just a name but he's been very very precise in telling us exactly how many of these things he's going to make 100 altos and 100 tenors this is collect ability and with that you get a serial number so for me that means this could potentially be a fantastic investment on what is a fantastic mouthpiece now i haven't played these mouthpieces i've heard people play them it's very impressive 
All right, so clearly these aren't all the mouthpieces or saxophones that can be bought. Some, like Cannonball, you have to buy those exclusively through brick-and-mortar music stores. And if you do actually have an opportunity, I highly advise you, go to an actual music store, try some mouthpieces, and try some saxophones. They are in the business of selling these products, not collecting them. So... All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got the tenor video like this that's coming up really soon. So stay tuned. That's all I got for you. See ya.